Solar panels and setting up electrical systems can seem daunting for sure. Here's a short guide of how I did it, and that may help you out with your projects. First, think safety when you're working around and with electricity. Remove all your jewelry, you don't want to get electrocuted, and have your watch or bracelet just melt through your wrist, and it's no good. It might inconvenience you for the rest of the day. I don't think at any point there's enough amperage to kill a healthy person in any of the solar work, but I'm not a doctor, so assume doing something stupid will probably give you some stupid results. If at any time you want more information on any individual part, I've done some video highlights on most of them. The playlist for the whole electrical system is in the video description. Alongside that, any parts that I mention also have an Amazon link below. It gives me bonus points if you buy it through that. I started with some very artistic drawings of what I thought a good solar setup might be like. Ah, uh, but don't worry, there are some actual good diagrams to come. The first focus of the solar system is, of course, the solar panels. Now these are HQST brand panels. And I think that's a good brand with good customer service. I can definitely recommend them and you can see why I recommend them so much in a future video. That would be the unboxing and review of the solar panels coming soon. These are 100 watts each that produce up to 17.7 volts each. But what makes these cutting edge awesome is the fact that they're flexible. These fit right over the contour of the van and have almost zero profile. Wind resistance? Forget about that. They're also super light at only 4 pounds each. I did some pretty neat stuff in the initial video and attached them without drilling holes in the roof. This was done through industrial strength velcro and this stuff is amazing. The panels are installed in series, which means we have the same amps, but we add all the voltage together. So 17 times 4 is 68 volts if my math is right. Here's one more disclaimer again. 68 volts is low shock risk, but like if you step out of the shower and you put both cables in your pants, I mean just don't do anything stupid. Consult your doctor if symptoms last for more than 4 hours. Coming out of the solar panels and into the control panel are custom cables. You can buy ready-made cables from the manufacturer, but they're at a preset size and they're pretty costly. After checking out another video, I saw instructions for making your own cables for a fraction of the price. Basically, any hardware store sells a 14 AWG rating cable and Amazon sells the end attachment plugs for super cheap. The link to the full video for that is in the description below too. So the solar panels are wired in series and they come in through here to the MPPT control panel. So what the, or the control charger. Uh, out of these two, we go to the batteries. Uh, right here, we're gonna have the out to the fuse box, which is gonna power the lights, uh, the fan, lights too, uh, fridge, and maybe a dehumidifier or just miscellaneous. I need to get that too. From the batteries, pretend they're wired. These are the batteries, you see. And then from the batteries, we have the inverter, which has fuse box, wires into the inverter. This will go to ground. This is a, another ground, which also has in it the uh, on and off switch for the inverter. And the control panel has this cool handy dandy uh, control panel as well, where you can monitor it and do all sorts of things. So this is all gonna be stored under the bed with the batteries. I've always thought electricians and electricity, things like that, circuits are really fascinating. In fact, I toyed with a little bit. I was like, oh, I want to be an electrician, but you know, this is a lot of work. <laughs> so I'm glad I get a chance to really put what I've learned into practice. And you know, I've been drawing up, let's see, schematics and different things like that. That's a brief circuit diagram. I have some better ones. The main purpose of the charge controller is to prevent the batteries from overcharging. In theory, you could connect the solar panels straight to your batteries, but I wouldn't recommend that since they'd probably explode, turning your cozy van dwelling experience into a flaming metal death trap. That may inconvenience you for the remainder of the day if you've been exploded. We covered this a lot more in the battery video, but batteries are the limiting reagent in your solar system. So to rephrase that again, what you'll notice the most is battery capacity, or rather, when you start to lack battery capacity. More solar panels make you charge quicker, but if you can only store a few hours of power, one or two cloudy days is really going to make your whole system not helpful. 
Batteries are measured in amp hours, so more amp hours means you can run more things for longer. That's a pretty easy concept to grasp. My laptop takes 2.5 amps per hour. The Dometic fridge takes about 3 to 5 amps an hour. I recommend going online and looking at a electronic calculator to see how much electricity you're going to be using throughout the day. My choice for batteries are two 155 amp hour sealed AGM batteries. So when we wire them in parallel, it's three 10 amp hours at 12 volts. The link to the highest quality ones I found are below. It's also very important to secure the batteries in place when you drive. You don't want them sliding around and then, you know, the common theme is exploding here, but, you know, they will get damaged. You can see I built a wood frame around most of the solar components here. I said earlier that they were at 12 volts. System voltage is determined by your batteries. If you have one 12 volt deep cycle battery, then it's a 12 volt system. If you have two batteries and connect them like I did in parallel, then it's still a 12 volt system. You just double the amps. If you have two connected in series, then it's a 24 volt system. I recommend the parallel 12 volt system as most of my appliances were also 12 volts. Next, we'll take a brief look at the inverter. This takes the solar power from the batteries and turns it into something a normal wall outlet plug can use. Now we've covered the different types of inverters in the previous videos, but as a reminder, I recommend going with the pure sine wave inverter. If you want more info on that, the playlist is also below. I still don't think everyone needs an inverter though. What will work for most people is finding the DC 12 volt car adapters for their laptops and cell phones and things like that. And then you can find 12 volt appliances. They're a little bit sometimes more expensive, but they'll save you in electricity in the long run, especially if you don't have to buy an inverter. I have some inexpensive, yet still very sensitive hardware I use for recording and other things, so it was a good deal for me to go with an inverter. So we see the solar comes in here, then it comes out through the batteries. These are wired in parallel, and then from the batteries, we get the inverter that's back here, it wires back through here. There's a ground that goes into the wall here, and then these two go to the fuse box. This is a diagram of the wiring. The panels are in series that run into the controller. From the controller to the batteries, we have a fuse. And from the batteries to the inverter, we have another fuse. The batteries here are wired in parallel, which connects both the positive and both the negative terminals together. From one of the negative terminals, I've also have it, had it wired straight into the van as a ground. The fuse box is below the bed. This lets us safely run things like the fans, the fridge, the lights, chargers, and any other appliances you can think to add. It draws power directly from the control panel. The grounding wires for all the appliances go back into the charge controller. From the fuse box, we have two wires that go to a 12 volt female car charger port. One of these runs my favorite little movable boat fan. It's one of my favorite and most used purchases. The other adapter goes to whatever I need it to be at the moment normally phone chargers. One direct wire goes straight to the roof vent, and then the rest go to lighting. For the lights, we run the wire behind the cabinet and into the ceiling. Then it comes out to the switch box and goes into the lights. The red wire goes out to the fuse box and over the light switches, then runs back along the same path to the ground. In between there and the loop back, I inserted the socket plug for the mood lights. I ran another red wire up the same path to the switches, this time onto the radial dial. Then the wire continues up into the ceiling and to wire each one of the LED lights. It comes back down through the dial again to complete the circuit. The ground wire comes back out and connects to the previous ground. If the diagram isn't enough, I have a full video showing how visually I wired the lights. It's one of the more complicated things to explain due to all of the switches. And then we have all the wiring come in and connect to the solar battery fuse box. Then we just look at the charge controller and make sure the power is flowing and all your appliances are good to go. You can definitely see that these diagrams have come a long way from the original doodles. That's kind of a metaphor for this whole project. I'm just trying to learn new and interesting things. Although you can still see that I need some serious work drawing legibly. Quick note, the cheapest place I found to get most of these items is, surprise, surprise, Amazon. There's also links in the description like I've said about 40 times in this video. Also, I put a download link to the sides and diagram I've showed here. And, and, 
each part's info video. So I'm sure it's apparent by now, but I'm not an electrical doctor. Although I have used and slept right on top of this setup for several months now without experiencing any symptoms of death or fire related death. This is the parts list and setup that worked for me. And if you have similar needs, it may be the best for you too. These videos are also half for me to go back and see what I did if I ever need to repair it. This is all alongside my handwritten documentation and reference guides. I can sit down and role play flying in a spaceship if I want to with all this info. I'll name it the Bebop. If you have any questions about any of the electrical system or really anything else, let me know in the comments and I'll be sure and try and cover it for you.